Hi, hope you're doing good. I am Nivia and today I'm going to speak about the content in the book An Indian Spy in Pakistan. Uh, you might have already heard about different stories related to Indian spies in Pakistan like a Razi movie uh, which is based out of the book calling Sehmet that is Sehmet's uh, true incidents being shown in the movie. Uh, similarly, there is Ravinder Kaushik's uh, story as well being portrayed in different movies like uh, John Abraham's Raw, then Ekta Tiger of uh, Salman Khan. So all these are quite popular because of the movies that were made. However, there is a person named Mohanlal Bhaskar, an Indian spy in Pakistan. He has written a book which is the same again titled uh, Indian Spy in Pakistan, which is not yet made into a movie and hence it's not that popular. He is not that popular. So today I'm going to speak specifically about this um, book, like what exactly is written in the book and about Mohanlal Bhaskar. Without any further ado, let's start. Mohanlal Bhaskar was born in 1942 in Punjab and he started his career uh, as a newspaper boy and a laborer. Later he took MA BA and then with a false identity with name um, Mohammed Aslam, he started doing spy work for India in Pakistan. His main mission was to gather the information related to Pakistan's nuclear mission or atomic energy program. And he was able to find a bit of crucial information uh, related to this and then he gave it to India. So while he was doing all this, he had to explore a lot in uh, Pakistan and meet a lot of people in Pakistan while doing the spy work. That time what he found was that uh, people uh, or the locals there in that particular land were quite scared uh, to speak against something that's uh, wrong. Even though they know that it is wrong, they were just quite scared to speak out or against it. Why? Because of martial law. Now all of this is happening and that's when the entry of one character comes in, Amrit Singh. Amrit Singh was a double agent and hence he betrayed Mohanlal Bhaskar and then sent him to jail. So when I say double agent, it means earlier he was working for India, spying in Pakistan. Later when Pakistan offered him more money, he switched it entirely. Means he started working for Pakistan against India. So he started doing spy work, uh, helping Pakistan to gather information related to India. So that's the way Mohanlal Bhaskar was caught. Now Mohanlal Bhaskar is put in prison and he goes through a massive torture. Uh, like for example, he was given electrical shocks. His body was covered with uh, chili powder. He was being made uh, to lie on an ice slab of just 3 degrees Celsius. And uh, he was asked to uh, keep on walking the entire night without sleeping. So uh, at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., when it's too late that he did not sleep at all, definitely he fell unconscious. And when he fell unconscious, the police officemen just grabbed him and bet him left and right. So here you should understand this, that Mohanlal Bhaskar's parents' only child was him. So he was a very pampered kid. And uh, even in school, he was a very promising kid. So his teacher never had to beat him for any reason. So a person who was never beaten until then is going through all these big massive tortures. In spite of all this torture, Mohanlal Bhaskar stood by his feet and he never changed his word. Means he kept saying that I am not an Indian spy and I did not give away any crucial information about uh, Pakistan's nuclear mission to India, though he did. Now, Pakistan officers knew very well that it's of no use like keeping him in prison for more days because he's not giving away any relevant data. So Pakistan played a card here. They offered or gave a proposal to Mohanlal Bhaskar as to become a double agent just like Amrit Singh. Means, they said, if you uh, basically help us, that is if you do go and do some spy work in India for Pakistan, then we'll leave you. Like you don't have to be in prison, you're free and we'll just tell to the public uh, that you just escaped from the jail and just help us in return. However, Mohanlal Bhaskar turned this offer down and then definitely the torture just kept continuing in a very harsh manner. But in spite of all this, there were a few uh, authority uh, people or officers, uh, policemen, who had 
a bit of sympathy towards Mohanlal Paskar, the reason being that he is an Indian and they considered Indians as their ancestors. Also in between this, Mohanlal Bhaskar keeps telling that there were pimps and decoits in the prison as well. In fact, there were prostitutes who were coming from outside the jail to entertain these people in prison. The Pakistan authorities gave him a lawyer to defend his case. However, Mohanlal Bhaskar denied it and he himself uh, questioned the witnesses and uh, defended his case without any lawyer's help. And he was given post at 14 years of imprisonment. Now, 14 years is like a big part of your life. Still, Mohanlal Bhaskar was very happy with this because he was expecting a death sentence. And so 14 years is something that he was very happy. It means 14 years in imprisonment still means that there is a hope to see his family after 14 years. He could see his wife, he could see his parents and his child whom he never met before after 14 years. The only communication that he had with his family was through letters. And his wife used to keep saying through every letter that I wait for you until end of my life. However, he did not have to wait for 14 years. After seven years, he along with the other Indian spies in Pakistan prison were sent back to India because of the Shimla Agreement. For all the people who do not know what Shimla Agreement is, earlier uh, the current Bangladesh was a part of Pakistan. So Bangladesh was called as East Pakistan and the current Pakistan was called as West Pakistan. Bangladesh wanted to become an independent country. That's the East part of Pakistan. East Pakistan wanted to become an independent country. And India helped Bangladesh to gain independence as well. So after this, uh, there was an agreement being signed between the former Prime Minister of India then, Indira Gandhi, and the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, uh, Zulfika Ali Bhutto. As a part of this agreement, the Indian prisoners in Pakistan were sent back to India, and similarly, the Pakistani prisoners in India were sent back to Pakistan. As a result, even Mohanlal Bhaskar was sent back to India. Now, a point which I missed is, if you remember Amrit Singh, the person who betrayed Mohanlal Bhaskar, or I can say India itself, he was also put into jail a few months later uh, or a year later after Mohanlal Bhaskar was put into jail. Why? Because Pakistan already got all the required information from Amrit Singh. It's all done. I mean, there's no further information that they could get from Amrit Singh. He gave away a few other Indian spies' names as well. So Pakistan got all that what they needed. And hence they put him into jail thinking that if at all India offers more money to Amrit Singh, he might go back to India and help India. So they didn't want that to happen. So after all the information was taken out from him, they put him also in jail. Now when this Shimla agreement came and then uh, the prisoners were going back to their country, Amrit Singh pleaded to Pakistan authority not to send him back to India because he was scared. He was literally scared as to what Indians will do to him since he betrayed the country itself. Now coming back to Mohanlal Bhaskar, he's back in India. However, he had a very difficult time in finding a job along with the other Indian spies uh, who were in Pakistan. So he went to the Prime Minister then, who was Muraji Desai. The tenure of Indira Gandhi was over and the new Prime Minister was Muraji Desai. So Mohanlal Bhaskar went to him seeking for help as to uh, get a new job. However, the statements which were told by Muraji Desai were very shocking. And it was basically this. Why should we suffer for the mistake that you have committed in Pakistan? Do you mean to say that if you were put in jail in Pakistan for 20 years, then we should compensate 20 years of your life? In spite of hearing these pricky statements from the Prime Minister and going through a massive torture in his life, Mohanlal Bhaskar keeps telling that he never did a favour for his country. Rather, it was his duty to do it. Later, uh, Harivam Shrai Bachchan uh, congratulated him and wrote a letter to Mohanlal Bhaskar uh, stating that he should record all the details as to what happened to him in Pakistan prison. And that's when Mohanlal Bhaskar wrote the book An Indian Spy in Pakistan. 
I hope you have liked this video. If you have liked this video, please do subscribe to my channel. And when I say like this video, I, I know that uh, this was quite difficult to hear or uh, even when I read this book, there were a lot of bone chilling moments. So it was not easy to take. However, I hope that I've been able to give you some insights about Mohanlal Bhaskar. And I encourage you all to read the book An Indian Spy in Pakistan to understand uh, Mohanlal Bhaskar better. Uh, until we meet next time, it's me Nivya signing off. Uh, keep reading a lot of books and uh, enjoy your life. Bye.